Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to create an easy habit tracker in Notion from scratch. So this habit tracker is going to be something that's not overly complicated, but does have a few different views and a few different unique ways to look at a habit tracker. What I'm going to do is go through a little tour of what the end result is going to look like first and then we'll go through and make a database from scratch. So let's get into this. Okay, so first what we're gonna look at here is the archive view. This is essentially every single day we are tracking our habits all the way down the list. I do have it sorted by date though. So as you can see today, today is not the 24th, but that is the latest date on our list and then our earliest is at the bottom. Okay, so there's this thing in Notion that is a checkbox property. You can do that by going over here, going through these selections and choosing checkbox. In this example, we have seven habits we want to do every day. That's excessive. I actually wouldn't recommend that many habits, but I want to give you an example of a database that has a lot of habits to work with. So seven habits each day, each has a different checkbox that you can check or uncheck. And as you can see over in our progress section, it is changing as we select them. When we select one, it says 14%, two, 29%, all the way up to 100%. That's pretty straightforward. We'll get into how to create a progress bar when we make this from scratch. Now there are four different views in this database and you can select these views right here. So we're in archive now, let's look at calendar. Calendar is just basically gonna be every single day put into an actual calendar view. And this is really nice because in each day you can actually select your habits in the calendar without having to click through like this, which is pretty nice. The next view is zoom in. What this essentially is going to do is the same thing in calendar view, but we're going to filter it by the coming week. So today is the 18th or today is actually the 17th, but it's going to give me all the days in the coming week in the next seven days. The next one is progress WD. What this is is progress per weekday. And actually what I want to do is go back up to archive and show you so what we're grabbing from here is the weekday property, and this is a select property. And every single day, it's a little bit of labor, but you're gonna go in and just select the day of the week it is, so that this view can populate. So what this view is essentially going to do is give us a general progress uh, average for every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What this is good for is if you want to look at what particular days you are more on track with your habits and what days you're not. So as you can see, each one of these cards is a day and a color. I'll get into the color when we make the database. But really what this is, is red is for bad, yellow is for okay, and blue is for good. Up here, you can see a little percentage. What this is going to do is calculate the average progress for every Sunday as Sundays are added. To do this, we're going to click here and you have a bunch of options you can do here. And this is in board view, by the way. What I have is average progress. And that's pretty much all we have. So we have an archive where we can fill everything in for every day. We have a calendar, we have a calendar that zooms in just to the particular week, and then we have a progress section. So I just want to show you one more thing before we start creating this. So in databases, you can create templates. So what I wanted to do was create a template that just simply adds a cover image, which is what's up here, and an emoji, depending on our progress. So I made one, two, three, four, five, six different templates. And the numbers here are basically a key for me to understand which one to use. So for 57% progress, I would go to a bit lazy, 40 to 60%. Not bad, it would be 60 to 80%, great, 80 to 99, and perfect, of course, is 100. 
So now let's start making this. First, I'm going to create a new page. We're going to call it Easy Habit Tracker. Give it an apple emoji. We're going to change it to full width since this is a pretty wide database. Go to inline table, call it habit tracker. And what we're going to do for this guy is call it a dash. And what I want to do is actually delete these and we're going to add a filter so that every time we create a new entry, it is going to create this little dash symbol for now. Of course, when we make our templates, it will be replaced with an emoji. So dash, this filter is going to be dash contains dash. So now every time we create a new entry, a dash will appear. The next one is going to be date and we're going to make it a date property. Next one is going to be weekday and we're going to make it a select property. Next one is habit one and I will quickly fly through this. That is a checkbox property. Okay, so now we're going to start putting in the weekdays. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to put in a lot of select options quicker with the text property. This is how it works. So we're just going to go Monday, let's capitalize this Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and you're going to separate all of them by commas. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then what we're going to do is go in and create select. Now, all of it is in there. So it's a, it's a lot quicker process than going in and creating new selects. So let's start our habit tracker on a Sunday. Let's start it on the 7th for this example. Bring this over here and now we're going to create our progress property with formula. Okay, so let's from right here start figuring out this progress formula. So with habits, we want all habits ticked. Obviously we want this to show as 100% and this to show as 0% and everything in between. This is how this formula is going to look. And I'm going to try to break this down as easily as I can. So each line is essentially going to look like this. We're going to replace everything in prop habit one that is true or checked, and we're gonna replace it with one. And then I'm gonna go over here, since this is a text one and not a number one, a number one would look like this, but it doesn't really work with replace. So we have to make it a text and then go over here and type two number like this. This is what this is gonna look like. If I click habit two, nothing happens because this is still false, but habit one, it'll show up as a number one. If I don't have two number in there, this is what it will look like. The one will come over here, one to the left. That means it is a text property or a text value. Like if I were to say, hello world, it would do that. If I were to say two number, of course, hello world is not two number, so nothing would really appear. You get the idea. We're going to do the same thing for every habit property. So we're just going to go plus. I'm going to paste this in and I'm going to say instead of habit one, two. And then we're just going to keep going down the list three. There's probably a simpler way to do this, but I feel like this is the best way to do it if you're unfamiliar with formulas. I'm going to add them all the way down. So 
sorry, there is seven. Okay, now from here, from here you can see that is now adding everything up by one. So if all of them were checked, it would say seven. That's a good start. Now what we want to do is get a percentage. So what I'm going to do is round 100 times, do another parentheses, do another parentheses, divide by seven because there are seven habits, another parentheses here, and then what I'm going to do is divide by 100. And that's going to give us a percentage. If we want it to actually look like a percentage, we'll go in here to this one, two, three button and click percent. Now, every time we click a habit, it goes up by percentages. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to off camera very quickly put in a few more rows so we get a better look at this and then we're going to create more. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually start creating those templates that I was talking about earlier. There's a couple ways to create a template. One way is to go right into the entry and see right here, it says press enter to continue with an empty page or create a template. Another way to do this is to go over here and go to templates and you can create a new template here as well. Let's edit this one. And let's call this one poor. This is if only one or two habits are checked off. Let's put that little emoji there. And let's give it a red background. There we go. And that's all it takes. Now we can see an option for poor. And if it was poor, and we select it, let's create a, another one. Let's create one that says, and let's give this an exclamation point. Let's give this one red as well. And let's say this one is 25 to 40%. The next one will say a bit lazy with the upside down face change this to yellow and this one will be 40 to 60 percent let's do another one not bad with the A-OK -okay emoji. And let's also make this one yellow. So these yellows are just symbolizing that it's not too bad of a progress rating. But you can make this however you want. Let's do great between 80 and 99 and let's make this green or I'm sorry blue and not bad is going to be sixty to eighty for us to put that in and then our last one is going to be perfect and this is a hundred percent Let's put in a check mark and also blue. Okay, so now we're done making our templates. Our first day is 86%, so that is a great day. Our second day is 43, a bit lazy. Tuesday at 86. Not bad. Let's look at making a calendar view. Let's call this calendar. Okay, so right off the bat, we're gonna have something like this, where it is just the title of a page and nothing else. To change this, we're going to go to properties 
And I'm going to toggle on habit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. You can also add the progress if you want. I wouldn't. That's just my own preference. Here, like I said before, you can check and uncheck boxes from this view. We can also create a zoom in view in calendar. Since we're not working with this week technically, seeing as today's the 17th, nothing is going to appear. So let's actually toggle these on real quick. I'll show you why right now. So our filter is going to read filter, add filter, date is within the next week. So it would technically be everything between 18th and the 24th, which we don't have any entries for. Let's look at our last board view. And this is going to be progress per weekday. Let's hide this bit here so it starts on a Monday. And let's start messing with these views. So properties I want to view are progress, and that's it. I also want to view, sorry, uh, the cover image, which is the image that we generated through those templates. I'm going to change this to small. If you want to also have the date in view, you can do that. I would also go to sort and date ascending, I believe. Also in default view, I actually want to call this archive. And I also want to sort this. By date, ascending, or descending, actually. Now I want to add a few more rows just so you get an idea of how this stuff auto-populates in other views. Let's add one for the 14th. And let's add one for the 15th. And the 16th. And the 17th. Okay, so now let's just plug in some habits. Let's go like this. This day was perfect, and then let's say this day is like this. All right, cool. Now we go in, 71, not bad. I'll probably do this off camera. Okay, now let's see how all this populated. So in our calendar, we now have more days plugged in. It's pretty obvious. And now when we zoom in, it still doesn't show up. Um, do we have one for the 17th? Yes, we do. So let's actually change zoom in a little bit. Let's have date is today or within the next week. Now it will start on the 17th and end on the 24th, which I would actually prefer to do. And in progress, we have a few more in here. It looks like this week actually starts on a Sunday. So I'm going to grab this Sunday and just push it over here. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There it is. Now everything kind of lines up evenly. Now let's put in that um, overall progress percentage. Like I said before, you come up here, go to average, progress, and now we have that. That's pretty much how to make this easy enough habit tracker. So I'll put a template down in the description um, to look at uh, for reference or just to, to copy into your own Notion workspace. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time.